Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Welcome back to my beginner guitar course. This week we're going to look at two ways of playing a C major scale. An open way and another way in a position. So the first way we're starting with the third finger on C and we're going C, then D, then E, then F, G, A, B, and finishing on C. So C major scale uses just white notes of a piano. So there's the key signature of C major is that there are no sharps or flats. So on a piano, that means that you don't use any of the black notes. It's really important that you learn the names of the notes on your guitar. I did a video last year about the names of the notes on the guitar, which I'll link to here, which you might find interesting. It might be a little bit heavy for where you're up to now, to be fair, you probably will be able to understand it. It's not, it's not rocket science, really. So let's play this scale together nice and slowly. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. Let's do that half that speed. So I'm going to play it as if they're minims. So one, two, three. Four. And we'll come back down. Cool. Great. So hopefully you can follow that. Let's play it at the speed. So we're just playing it now at 60 beats a minute as crotchets. One, two, three, four. One. Great. That's the first thing to get together before you move on to this next thing, I would say. That's a great way of playing the scale, but you notice that the open strings have a very different sound to the fretted notes. So when I come onto this D, it kind of has the sound of an open string. What we can actually do is we can move the D down onto this fret here, fret five on string five. So we can play the scale using Try and get this so that you can play it at this speed, really. Cool. Once you've done that, you could take an exercise that we did when we were learning the E minor pentatonic scale, which I'll link here, and we can do down, down, up on each note, so. That's probably a little bit quick to play at this at the moment, but that's what you're looking to do eventually, I guess. Now, the great thing about this shape that we've just learned is that this can be moved anywhere on the guitar as long as we keep the root, the note that the scale is named after, on the fifth or sixth string. So if I want to play a G major scale, now we've got that. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, just leave me a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. Do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out with what I'm doing. I've got lots more ideas for other content coming. So subscribe, stay involved with everything. Do give the video a like as well. It really helps me out. I can move this scale around. So say if I start here, then it becomes a D major scale. Now 
Now you will notice that when we move to G and when we move to D, we're now venturing using the black notes as well. So the key signature of the scale changes. There'll be more on that in lessons to come. I don't need you to understand that quite yet. You do need to understand that long term. Really studying music theory is something that you should take on as part of your guitar playing. Learning music theory is just as important as learning the guitar is because really what we're learning about is music and then we just happen to be applying that to the guitar and playing the guitar. So any of these concepts are then transferable into other instruments, other skills in music. So if you become a producer or something like that, a lot of the things that you learn about music on the guitar are then transferable skills and into recording and things like that. And I use all my musical skills when I'm recording constantly. That's what I'm doing. I listen to the sound. I listen to what notes are resonating in things and getting in the way of each other in certain notes that get in the way of each other. And then I sort that out in the mix using EQ or compression, essentially. So if you're a producer, I would say one of the most important things that you can do is, is get good at playing a musical instrument, you know? Fantastic. So we can just play this scale a lot this week. So we could just play this scale a lot, really, and get it so that we can play it nicely. We can just play this scale loads and get it so that your coordination is really cool. Remembering to keep your fingers nice and close to the frets, that helps. That means that you can be lighter with your touch and your coordination is cleaner. You don't have to push down as hard so you can play it faster. Great. So keep practicing that. You don't need to be able to do it as quick as that, but you know, it is a really important exercise to keep doing. Do go back to previous videos. There's a playlist here that you can follow. Subscribe to the channel. Write me some comments. Let me know how you're getting on with things. Is there anything that you don't understand about these scales? Is there anything that you don't understand from previous videos? Anything that you need explaining in more clarity? Please do let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Please do go and check my album out on Spotify. It's called The Dreams That Keep Me Awake. I've got various other things coming. I've done a video with John of Edge Studios about how to mic a drum kit up where John really goes into quite a lot of detail of things that you need to do if you're micing things up in a live situation or in a, in a professional situation, essentially. Cable management, things like that. It's really interesting video. So stay tuned for all that and more. Thank you very much. <laughs>